Hello, sweet friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week, I share kinda shabby but always chic, crafty inspirations. As always, we have some fun projects in store. First of all, I'm going to be updating these beautiful wooden napkin rings that I purchased from Hobby Lobby, and we are going to be using a decor mold and some air dry clay. Next, we'll be using either a toilet paper or paper towel roll to create some cute posy pockets. We'll also be using some coffee filters to create some beautiful flowers. Then we'll use those flowers to create a beautiful wreath using our basket here as our wreath form. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. So you can see these are solid wood and they're very pretty, but I want to give them a shabby chic look to go on my dining table. First, I'm gonna start with a coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut. And this is the Iron Orchid Designs Classic Elements Mold, and I love this. It is just so very versatile. And I'm going to be using these two sections here for our napkin ring embellishments. And again, just a light dusting of cornstarch is going to help your clay release more easily from your mold. And I'm using my DOS air dry clay that I get from Amazon, and I really like working with this. I've got just a small section and I'm gonna warm it up in my hands a little bit to make it more pliable. Push your clay into your mold and then use some kind of scraper to flatten the back and remove the excess clay. Turn it over and roll up to release your elements. I don't want this excess right here as part of the design on my napkin ring, so I'm just going to take my scraper and cut that excess off. And it's left jagged edges, so I'm going to take a wet little detail brush and just smooth those edges out so it looks nice and even. And that looks much, much better. So we're going to set these aside and let them dry for about 45 minutes. So we've let these set up for a little bit. They have areas of dryness, but they are still moist and pliable. So we're going to go ahead and glue them to our napkin rings. I'm using my tight bond and I'm going to squeeze just a little bit out on my tile here. Take my brush and spread the glue all over the back. And now I'm just going to lay them on my napkin ring and apply some gentle pressure to get them to form to the shape of our napkin ring. And then we're going to push down gently. And you can see some little cracks have formed there. If I didn't want the cracks, I could have put these on when they were wet, but I don't mind that because I am going to be distressing these. So that's going to be a nice detail. That is going to be so pretty. And we'll put the other one on in the same fashion. And that looks really good. So now again, we're going over that with our hazelnut because when we distress it, we're going to bring that color back and it's going to be really, really pretty. And I am not painting the inside. We're just going to paint the outside of our napkin rings. So now that our hazelnut is dry, I'm going to come back over the top with two coats of our Waverly in the color Plaster. So now that our paint is dry, I'm going to come back with a wet wipe and start to do some wet distressing. And if that does not take off as much of the paint as I would like, then we can always come back in and use our sandpaper. And as I'm rubbing, I can see it's really not taking off enough of that paint. So I am going to use my sandpaper. That's better. And it's starting to bring back some of that hazelnut paint up underneath there. I'm going to do a little bit on our applique. And not too much. Because your sandpaper will actually sand down your clay as well. 
It's a subtle difference, but it really helps to bring out those details. So I'm going to go ahead off camera and I'm going to distress this one just as I did with this one. I really like the subtle distressing on both of those. I think that looks really nice. So now we're just going to come back with our Folk Art Clear Wax and give them a coat to protect our paint. I'm just going to cover the surface with our wax and then we're going to come back and pat off and buff away the excess. And they are all sealed and protected. I think they look great. I can't wait to get these on my dining table. Now let's go ahead and move on to our next project. Today's video is a springtime collaboration with my crafty friend Annie at Indie Annie Jones. Links to her channel and video are in the description box below. Pop on over to her channel for there's lots of shabby chic goodness for you to explore. For our next project, we're going to be using our paper tubes here to create our little posy pockets. And for the toilet paper roll, I am squishing that in the middle and folding that in half. And now we're going to cut along this fold line. So these are roughly going to be about two inches high. And you can either use a stapler to staple your end together, but I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue mine. And we're just going to squeeze it together until that glue sets up. I have seen them all over Pinterest and Facebook and YouTube, and I just thought it'd be fun if we made some together too. So now I'm just going to take a few minutes and glue these together. And then I'm also going to be cutting this down into two inch segments as well. And now that we have all of our tubes glued together, we're going to use our Waverly in the color plaster again, and we're going to give these a quick coat of paint. And we're just going to be painting the outsides. There's no need to paint the inside. And I love how it gives texture to that. That cardboard just gives a nice texture to our paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the rest of these, giving them a light coat of our plaster. And now that we have all of our little tubes painted, we're going to set these aside and let them dry, and then we'll come back and do some decorating. The paint is dry, and I like the texture that the cardboard provided, but I want to add a little more texture, so I'm using my Iron Orchid Design stamp in Crackalure and my Ranger Archival Ink in Coffee to add just a little bit more texture. And I only need to do just a small corner here. Put that on there and stamp it down and you can see it adds nice texture. So our stamped texture turned out really nice and I only did the front. And now we're going to add some cute other decor to the front and I will be using the Iron Orchid Designs knob toppers. I've had this stamp for years and it is a little difficult to find. If your local stockist does not have this, you may want to try the Purple Painted Lady. Line it up, push it down. Oh, there's one. How cute is that? And I always wipe the excess ink off my stamps before I then go wash them in my sink. You don't want that ink drying on your stamp. Let's try our rose. That's cute. The bunny is very, very faint in that pink, but it's still pretty. I like my little bird here. I'm going to do that one in aquamarine. Our little bluebird, how pretty is that? That purple is gorgeous. I like that. Really pretty. I'm going to do my dragonfly in emerald green. That didn't come out well. You can't even tell that that is a dragonfly. She turned out cute. The rose on that really turned out pretty. I like that. So we'll let our ink dry and then we'll get some more decorations on these. Now I've got an assortment of ribbons and laces and beads here and we're just going to start decorating. And I like my little pink bunny and my pink pom-pom trim. So I'm going to start there and glue that down. That's so cute. So I put a small dot back there and now I'm just going to wrap this at the top just a couple of times around and then I'm going to tie an off-center bow because I don't want it to cover up my bunny. 
that's cute. I think that one's cute. Let's go ahead and do another one. I love the pink and I think that looks pretty on our Paris with the rose on there. Okay, that's pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and glue some more little embellishments on these and I'll show you each one after I'm finished with them. Okay, let's get a look at these before we put our little posies in there. So we've got some pretty little trim around there. That's cute. I actually pulled that bigger bead off and put a smaller one on there. It looks much better. Some lace and some eyelet trim. Lace and ribbon. Pom-pom trim and some other trim that I glued to the top on the inside. And then that one, that's so pretty. And then I took a six and a half inch long piece of the twine and put that in there because I do plan on hanging these. They would be cute as gift tags. They would be cute with a magnet on the back. They're just really super easy to make as well. So now let's go ahead and get some of our posies in there. And to fill my little pockets, I have just an assortment of all kinds of greenery and some paper flowers, some other little tiny floral petals, some solo wood flowers. There are just so many things that you can put inside your little posy pockets. I think these are all so cute. Well, I'm going to clean up all of this and we will move on to our next project. For our next project, we are going to be making these beautiful coffee filter flowers. I just had so much fun making these. I did not color this one, it's just the plain white filter, but we are going to be using watercolors to add a soft vintage look to the rest of these coffee filters. This is a soft pink and this is just a soft peachy blush color and I'll show you how I achieved that using this little watercolor set that I picked up from the kids crafting section at Walmart. I laid out my coffee filter and then just used a brush to wet it down. Just in the outer sections. This middle section doesn't really matter. It's not going to show up. And for the pink, I just wet these two here together and started on the inside and just brushed it down. The good thing about this is, until it dries, you never know what you're going to get. That's the fun part of it. Now I'm going to rinse my brush and go back into these two pinks here. And then brush over the rest. Then I took my coffee filter and laid it on a baking rack. Then I took my hair dryer on low. And it usually takes about three minutes. And there it is, all nice and dry. Just a gorgeous soft pink color. And now we'll do one of the peach. So again, we're just gonna wet the outside here of our filter. And now I'm gonna dip into first just these two colors right here and brush those all over. Come in with a little bit of that pink and just go around the edges. And I'm going to add some of this dark brown. Maybe give it a little vintage look on the edge there. Coffee, tea, watered down paint, anything like that would be great. But I just thought it would be fun to use my watercolor set. All right, let's dry it and see what we get. That's pretty too. Just a nice, subtle, beautiful little peachy color. I love it. Well, let's go ahead and get started on making our flowers. So I used six filters for this one, and I don't want my flowers to be the same size, so I'm going to use four of the pink and three of the peach. So you wanna start by folding your filter in half, and then you're going to fold it in half again. And now that we've got it folded, we're just going to cut scallops. For the first one, I want this one to be my center, so I'm going to cut several very exaggerated 
scallops. And they don't have to be perfect. They're coffee filters. So you can see I have several and I made them very exaggerated. For the next two, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold them in half, fold them in half again, and we're going to cut our scallops again. But this time, I want there to be fewer scallops and I want them to be less exaggerated. Like this. And so you can see the difference between the two. For my last one, again, fold it in half, fold it in half again. And now with this one, I just want just a few scallops. So I'm just going to take this down to the center and back up. So it's really like a little heart shape. And now we're going to open up our filters. I'm going to take this and I'm going to stagger my scallops. So not all of my scallops are running the same way. Now I'm going to take a skewer in the center and I'm going to come up through the center. So I've got about two inches here. I'm going to take a little bit of glue so it does not come off of my skewer. And now I'm going to gather that and just really scrunch that up. And I'm going to give that a little twist because that's going to be the middle of our flower. Look how pretty just one filter is. And now we're going to bring up the next one and we're going to bring it up and around the center of our flower. And just press it and keep finger pleating it all around the center of your flower until it looks good to you. And then take your fingers and just kind of roll down the edges of your paper. Bring up our next layer. And then bring up our last layer. Isn't that just beautiful? My goodness, I love these. Now I can leave it nice and full like that. I could crush it and make it much more small or I can open that back up. Just beautiful. Now I'm going to be using some floral tape. If you don't have floral tape, you could use washi tape, you could use masking tape, whatever you have. You could even use some twine and tie that up. All we're going to do is make sure our flower doesn't come apart here. So I'm very tightly wrapping that around this bottom part of my flower. Take my wire cutters and I'm going to clip right below that. We'll do our other ones and then we'll add our leaves. So I have three of the peach ones and we're going to do this one a little differently. We're still going to fold in half and fold in half again. But this time instead of making scallops, we're just going to clip in and make fringe. And we're going to do the same thing to our others. Close together or as far apart as you'd like. And we're going to line all of those up, take our skewer and pop through the middle again. Put some glue on there so our top doesn't come off there. And squeeze. Bring our second layer up. And now our third layer. I just love making these flowers so much. They are so pretty. Now again, I'm going to take my floral tape and wrap the back. Snip that. I love that color combination too. That's going to be really pretty when I make my wreath. Now we're going to get some leaves on here. These are just some florals that I picked up from Walmart. These are nice big leaves here and I think those will look pretty with that. I'm just going to cut them apart and see where I like them. So when I have them where I like them, I just turn it over and use my glue gun to glue them down. 
and I do turn my glue gun to low when I'm working with florals. I don't want to melt these. I think that's a pretty leaf set. So again, I'm just going to cut this apart and glue it to my flower. I like that one too. These are so, so pretty. So I'm just going to continue making these various flowers here. And then when I have all of my flowers ready, we're going to put them on our basket to form our wreath. But how beautiful would these be in just a bouquet in a vase on your table? Look how gorgeous that is. For our last project, we're going to be taking our coffee filter flowers and putting them onto this basket for a wreath. Now I have an assortment of different garlands here. And I'm just going to figure out which one of these garlands I want to put on my basket. And I will be using my floral wire to actually wire that on. I don't want to glue that onto my basket. So I decided on this one. It kind of looks like Easter grass to me. And I'm going to be wiring some on along the top up here and then on the bottom right here. I don't want to totally cover the basket. I'm going to cut about six of these and they're about a foot long. So I'm going to lay this and work this in to where I like how it looks. And then I can start wiring it on with my little wires here. You know, because you've got this woven area here, that's going to make that very easy to attach. So now I'm just going to take one of my little cut wires here and run this through. Then when I pull it and turn it to the back, I'm just going to twist that tightly a couple of times and then I'll come back and cut all of this excess off later. I'm going to come right here and put another one right in this area here. And when you're doing yours, you'll be able to feel how many of these you're going to need to tie that down with. So pull it through there right here and then just twist that tightly. And I'm just going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. I cut my bottom piece into two separate pieces because I want this one to lie this way and then I'm going to turn this one up like that so it is more full on these areas here. Slip it through the weave of the basket, pull it tightly and twist. Okay, that's what we have so far. Now before I clip everything, I'm just going to give it a little tug just to make sure it's all secure and it does feel nice. So now I'm going to turn it over and just clip off the excess. And then tuck those tails into the basket. Now I just need to play around with the placement of the flowers to see how I want those to look. I like this placement and I'm not going to bore you by showing you gluing them on, but I am just going to go back and glue these on. I decided not to use the white one. I thought that it was just too big of a color contrast between the pink and the little soft peachy color that I had going on. Look how pretty. I really, really like how that turned out. Now I think I'm going to add just a couple of little sprigs of maybe some smaller little flowers, just something to highlight that just a little bit more. So I pulled out some other stuff that I had either from Walmart, like the lavender here. I think that's pretty, maybe some of that interspersed. And then I picked these up at Dollar Tree. So that's cute. These are cute. Maybe some of the green. I don't know. So I'm going to play around with that and see what I like in there before I start gluing it into my basket greenery. So I've added the lavender and some of the berries. The white I thought was just too big of a contrast. So I stuck with the green and some of the little lavender flowers. And I was able to just take these and stick them into the basket. I didn't even glue any of this in. So I really like how that looks. Now all I need to do is get everything staged up and show you how pretty all of our crafting projects turned out.
so much for spending time with me today. I truly appreciate you. I hope you are inspired to make a few of the coffee filter flowers and the posy pockets for yourself. Remember to visit Indiana Jones to see all of her shabby springtime projects too. Please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next week, my sweet friends, be blessed.